So, yeah, it's kind of – that's the best-case scenario for a coach, I said. You know, you win the game, but you got a bunch of stuff to complain about uh, in a game you won. That's good for a coach. That but is good for a coach. Here's the problem. <clears throat> um, you would think that – you're right. You win the game. That's the most important thing. But some things go wrong, a.k.a. teaching <clears throat> moments, practicing moments – Oh, that's right. The Eagles don't practice, or not everybody practices. They have load management. Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365, which, by the way, do a little uh, humble brag here, even though we had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Our logo is better than any of the other logos here on Jacob youtube channel agree or disagree oh of course it is it is and and, uh, mcmullen and mcdonald had absolutely nothing to do with it we were not consulted no nothing to do with. we are not designers uh someone else did it uh other than us but we will take credit for it because it's birds 365 and that's and 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 we're number one we're the foundation jody we're the where i believe we were the number we were the first show on Jacob, uh, mm, yeah, they changed the name of one show that came on before us uh, and got true. a new name that's and a true. new lineup. That's true. Big B, All Barrett's right. been here longer than you got to get. Uh, that's true. All right. I tried to humble brag, but it didn't yeah, work. It, it, it didn't work. It, no, it, it is because technically we have been Birds 365, which, by the way, uh, I just realized that t- this morning. Thank you for going there and brought it up. Um Today is show number 363. Wow. Yeah, I haven't asked you in a while because you're the official uh, uh, record keeper. Yeah, the, the record keep- keeper. So uh, Monday will be 364 and the Eagles will be playing the Vikings. Tuesday will be show number 365 for <laughs> Birds 365. Yeah. So the friggin' Eagles better win on Monday. If they rain on our parade on Tuesday, when it's show number 365 on Birds 365, you're going to have one unhappy host here, buddy. I, You know, we'll probably have more listeners if they lose than if they win. So well, that's always I been the case. Well, no. Yeah. Uh, here, here's, uh, take, take it from me, a guy who's only been doing this for 30 some odd years in Philadelphia for 30 plus. Um, if you're looking for responses, if you're looking for reaction, loss is always better than winning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, having done talk shows here in town for as long as I have, after an eagle loss, your phones are always busier. You get more calls. You get more emotional calls. You get calls that spur on other calls. After a win, you don't get as much back and forth. You don't get as much response. Now, actual numbers of listeners and or viewers, a wins will generate more. Really? You, you, oh, right. yeah. You get you get better ratings when the team is better. You get oh, yeah. Better well, reactions. yeah. I mean, if, if you're, you know, that's a, you know, if you're the Detroit Lions last year, like you're and you start owing. No, whatever, nobody's ten. paying attention. Nobody's they, paying they, attention. They all just get out. They but they if, whine and moan and bitch for yeah, a yeah, period yeah, yeah. and then say, Ah, oh, screw I'm this, out. and just yeah, go I'm do out. something else. So you can't have that. But you know, if you're good but not real good, well, last week is a perfect example. The Eagles won the game. It's tough to uh, tough to realize that at times because so many people have so many issues with how they won the game. But they did win, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, uh, even though people have tried been trying to convince me otherwise this entire week. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of – that's the best-case scenario for a coach, I said. You know, you win the game, but you got a bunch of stuff to complain about uh, in a game you won. That's good for a coach. That but is here's, good for a coach. Here's the problem. <clears throat> um, you would think that – you're right. You win the game. That's the most important thing. But some things go wrong, a.k.a. teaching <clears throat> moments, practicing moments – Oh, that's right. The Eagles don't practice, or not everybody practices. They have load management and take some yeah. downtime. And... Yeah, we got to. You know, can I run some Jalen Hurts numbers by you, Jody? Yes, which, by the we way, were... before you go to that, um, I don't know if you even attempted looking up. It looked like you were trying to do that. Do you know where to look up 
most blitzes, team individ, individual team blitzes week by week in the National Football League? Because I'm, um, I'm just yeah, suggesting can, off the I top can, of my uh, head, the Lions blitz more than anybody else week one in the NFL. I can find it. I'm trying to think. It's All right. So give me the Jalen numbers, but remember to go back to that because I All do right. want to address it. Um, uh, all right, Jalen Hurts, uh, 333 offensive yards against Detroit. Uh, on third and fourth downs, he made 10 conversions for 150 yards and a touchdown. First Eagle with 200-plus passing yards, 70-plus rushing yards since Michael Bick in 2013. That's one. Number two, yeah, you that, probably already heard this one. Hertz is the only quarterback in NFL history to post 4,000 plus passing yards and 1,000 plus rushing yards in their first 20 career starts. And then the last one, since becoming the Eagles' full time starter, Hertz ranks first amongst NFL quarterbacks in rushing yards, rushing TDs. A little surprise, but not, you know, because Lamar got hurt. But here's the bigger one. He's also tied with Tom Brady for the second most explosive plays, 116 in the NFL over that span, behind Justin Herbert, who entered last night's game with 117. Um, I, you know, I it, he does it in a weird way, but I got to build around the kid. I got to build around him. And that's not sitting in the pocket. I realize everybody wants him. And that's not full field progressions. It might blow up, Jody. I'm real. You know, he might get hurt. It might be too much. But I got to go. What's better? All right. I'll phrase it to you this way. What's better? Taking advantage of what he does well when he's healthy or trying to keep him healthy and making him do what he doesn't do well? Right. And you and I have says, stated this many times, and it'll only become a massive issue if it goes a specific way. Last night's game, perfect example. Justin Herbert in yeah. the pocket. In the pocket. Took yeah. a clean hit to his ribs. Uh, they had a chance to pull that game out. They had the one play where he's running, and he just couldn't even – He couldn't lift his arm to throw the football. So he just like half sidearmed it out of bounds when he could have turned it upfield, could have gone to a slide, gotten a first down, continued to drive. He couldn't do it because he was physically hurt. And he stayed in the pocket. He got hurt in the pocket. You can get hurt anywhere on the National Football League field. Philadelphia Eagles, whether you practice or not, come Sunday, they're going to play tackle. The Minnesota Vikings are going to come in and play tackle. So you can protect your guys as much as you want in practice and say, hey, we got them to the starting line and we were healthy when the game started. But then if you get hurt in the game, you know you're going to be called on the carpet because you didn't prep enough. It's a violent game. Even though the NFL, in its infinite winsome, has made it attempted to make it a less violent game Uh, Don't kid yourself. They did that because of concussion lawsuits more than anything else. But they have uh, rewritten their rules over the course of years, now decades, to make it a less violent game. You can only do so much. It's a violent game. People are going to get hurt. They're going to hit each other. And God forbid Jalen Hurts gets hurt on a play outside the pocket because people are going to then say, see, I told you, we can't have a quarterback who plays the way that Jalen Hurts does. It's going to happen, Johnny Mac. Write it down. Yeah, I'm, I am I mean, I'm with you. I, I, I talk about it all the time. I say, I, I don't care what anybody tells me. Uh, you know, the Eagles philosophy, and I think it's misunderstood, and the, they've rested seven guys. And by the way, that's going to be the plan for them the entire season on Wednesdays. How old is Josh Sweat? Yeah, but he had a really catastrophic. I think people don't realize um, when when Josh was coming out of high school in uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, he was some scouting services, you know, rivals, whatever. Um, number one player in the country, high school player in the country. Um, and he had a devastating knee injury 
towards the end of his high school career, dislocated kneecap, one of those injuries, one of those Teddy Bridgewater type injuries where if they didn't get, if they didn't do things correctly, they would have been talking about amputation. He had a really serious knee injury and it's always going to be somewhat of a problem for him. That's one of the reasons he was a fourth round pick and wasn't a first round pick because he's, if you look at Josh Sweat and you say edge rusher, you go, Oh, there's an edge rusher. He looks like an edge rusher. I mean, he's got every physical trait you could possibly need to be a good edge rusher, but he's got a bad knee and he's got a chronically bad knee and he's got to wear a brace and he's downplayed it in recent years. He's gotten over it, but the Eagles know it and they're very cautious of it. And, and they want to keep, uh, um, you know, they want to keep him as healthy as possible for as then, long as possible. Then let me ask this question. Were the Eagles ill-advised to give him the contract that they gave him? Because the way you're describing him, it's a house of cards that if any kind of wind comes by, it's going to blow down and he's going to go down. Oh, well, that's, that's not the case. It, it's the exact opposite. He's proven and Josh gets kind of angry when people bring it up to him now because he's passed it. In his mind, he's passed it. But in the Eagles mind, you know, they're, you know, the doctors are different. Doctors are doctors. And they're saying, well, you had this catastrophic injury earlier in your life. Uh, we want to maximize how long you're going to be uh, at an optimum level to play NFL football. From his perspective, he's over it. Uh, from their perspective, and we know how cautious the Eagles are in general, uh, they want to make sure they have him as long as possible. But he's proven he's healthy. Uh Back from the the high school injury, he's proven he's over that. Um, same thing with Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson's a young player, um, but he's had so many issues. He was one of those guys on the list because they want to keep him as healthy as possible for as long as possible. All right. So um, here's my here's my question to you, Johnny Mac, because it's been a a major cause celeb this week. Is Howie Roseman too involved in an area? above and beyond his expertise that his quote unquote expertise leaks into another area because he's the guy who's got to submit the 48 man roster. Is he actually putting influence in on the game planning? Maybe not direct, but indirectly the game planning of it again. Maybe Howie Roseman isn't the guy we should be questioning here. Maybe it's what's Arch's last name. There's another last name. I can't Arch uh, Tenota. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe he's the guy we should be looking at going, wait a minute, is this guy using too much influence on the Philadelphia Eagles and dictating terms as to something as key as who practices and who doesn't, specifically after a week one where they gave up 35 points to the Detroit Stinking Lions without a superstar player on their entire offense? Yeah, what? What I can say, I mean, how he listens to Arsh Ganoda, <laughs> and it's pretty clear, and it's how his decision goes. So how he's no expert, he'll say that. He has no idea. He's he's not a doctor. Um, he said me he said that to me specifically, but he trusts uh his medical people, and Arsh is the chief medical officer of the Eagles and um, they've given him a lot of credit inside the organization and they, they believe him a lot in him. Of power is what it seems like. And they, yeah, He's they believe dictating in him. terms on who's getting a Wednesday off the second week of the season. Eh, that, that's a pretty big power base. I wouldn't say he's dictating terms, but he's being listened to. He's recommending like doctors do. Doctors will always say your own doctor will say they offer recommendations. And most people who are smart, if they like their doctor, if they have a good doctor, uh, they follow those recommendations. That's what's going on. So, you know, depends how you phrase it. He's not going in and saying, you listen to me and this is the way you have to do it. And I have more power than anybody else in the building. The Eagles just have a lot of respect for him. They believe uh, he's correct and they trust him and they're using his recommendations, but you're right. So, it's all Howie. Howie's the one who says, nope, we're going to listen to these recommendations. And even though Nick Sirianni says he's on board, 
I'll never believe that because I know how competitive Nick is and you can't be one way and say, Oh, I don't want to practice. I don't want to have all the practice because that's my issue with the Eagles. Not that nobody gets to prepare. I just talked about Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell was complaining about tackling of his team after the loss. Um, Nobody gets to prepare like they want to prepare, but the Eagles don't prepare as what they don't use as much as what they're given, which right. is strange to me. That's the strange part to me. People want to compare the 2022 Eagles to the 20, oh, 2002 Eagles or the 2095 or the 1995 Eagles or back it up the Dick Vermeil to the 1983 Eagles. That's irrelevant. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The game has changed. The rules have changed. The collective bargaining agreement has certainly changed. So you can't compare those things. You compare the 2022 Eagles to the 2022 Lions and the 2022 Vikings and the 2022 Commanders. That's who you got to compare them to. What kind of level of practice are those teams, other teams in the NFL going through this year? Comparing them to any team prior to this is just a folly that that's foolish and ridiculous and people will continue to do it, but it's just dumb. Um, but you don't need to compare them to any previous team. You need to compare them to current NFL, other teams. And you're right. The Eagles come in at last and, and specifically with the situation, I couldn't believe yesterday they had seven players in limited practice, six of which were listed as rests. John, We've played one game. One. This is yeah. not coming down the stretch. Week 15 where your guys have taken a beating and they've got nags and injuries or whatever. It's week two of the season. And they're already resting six guys, several of which are younger than 25. They uh, Fletcher Cox, I get. Fletcher Cox has been in the wars. He's been in the trenches for a decade now. Brandon Graham, I get. Same thing. He's got a decade plus under his belt. Guys who are one and two years in the league, you're already giving them rest. But that yeah, but those, me, that tells those me guys, the doctor is too involved. Even if you're saying he's not dictating, he's just suggesting. Well, if they're listening, suggestions become dictates. Uh, yeah, I'm not happy with it. Yeah, and the, the number was seven. So that was our first question. Now, Fletcher, uh, well, Brandon one with Graham, Stoll was hurt, right? Uh, Stoll was, yeah. He was limited with an ankle. So it's right. Fletcher, it's Brandon Graham, Lane Johnson, Jane, uh, Jason Kelsey. Um, um, I think those are the veteran players, the veteran maintenance guys. And then the other guys, the two young players, Dickerson Landon Dickerson and, and Josh Sweat, have significant uh, prior injury his histories. Uh, and then Isaac. Sam Alo is kind of in between, but is coming off the significant uh, Liz Frank injury. Um, so, I mean, that was our first question, right? I mean, it's week one. Um, you know, what the heck is going on uh, with so many players rested? Um, so, you know, what I was told, just pulling up the text message as we speak, um, this is part of their normal weekly practice plan. So um, this is going to be get used to this is what you're telling me. Get, get used be, to this. Yeah. Get get used to this with those particular, those seven players. That is part of their weekly practice plan. So this is a little bit skewed <clears throat> because it's a Monday game. So everything's pushed back a day. So Thursday was a typical Wednesday on a normal Sunday game day. So Wednesdays, you're going to see those seven players be limited at practice, um, which basically means they'll do individual work um, and then probably sit out of team drills. Part of the weekly plan. We'll see how it works out. I mean, all you can do is look in hindsight how these ideas work. Um, but, yeah, right now, ours is – a star in the building, as we, as we shall say. All right, and this won't make me any friends, but their stats, their facts, you can use them, abuse them, uh, read into them what you want. Last week, Brandon <laughs> Graham, one tackle, 
it was an assist on the sack with Fletcher Cox because well, the quarterback dropped the football yeah, and snap. he kind of fell on it more than anything else. So uh, Brandon Graham, who got rest yesterday, had one tackle. Fletcher Cox had two tackles, one of which was that half a sack with Brandon Graham that happened because the quarterback dropped the football. So other than that, he had one tackle and Josh Wett had three tackles. So those are the guys who got rest this week because they put in so much effort and not and about effort, production. Jody. Not nothing to do about effort. Nothing. Nothing to do about they probably shouldn't use that term rest. I would I would go the Greg Popovich route and use maintenance. Um hey, it's the new world, new world of sports. Load right. maintenance. And some things you have to be able to adjust, and some things you can look at and go. I think this is uh, not necessarily as productive as people think it is, that uh, it might not pay the dividends that some people think, that some old school things need to stay in place, even in a change world, even as the game has changed and uh, been handled differently. All right, he's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. We are the Mac and Mac guys. Coming up next from Sports Illustrated, Viking reporter, Will to be determined. No, we're not <laughs> talking about who's going to practice for the Eagles. No, we're going to talk about the fact that we're not sure how to pronounce Will's last name. Uh, it's R-A-G-A-T-Z. Is it Raggets? I'm going Raggets. Raggets. Uh, we'll find out for sure. Will's scheduled to join us. Talk a little Vikings via a Viking perspective. Eagles up next here on Birds 365.